Is that ketchup on your eggs? Mm-hmm. Joe. It's the best way to eat scrambled eggs You're because scrambled a... eggs are gross without ketchup or something mixed in with them. I love you. You can't be doing this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketas. Ketas. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketas, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's you're going to find all of our different recipes. Okay, that's what's at. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, that way every single time we have breakfast together, you'll be alerted to it. So it is Monday morning. We're Hit getting, me. We're getting ready for keto on the couch. Yes. Thank you. And uh, we're having a little bit of breakfast. Scrambled we, eggs. We got a little bit of an earlier jump than normal on Mondays. Not, Mondays, normally we're doing this opening vlog like 20 minutes before keto on the couch. We, we've given ourselves an hour, over an hour. I was ready to like get going this morning. Really? I was. I was like, I'm full of energy ready to go and once I'm prepared it's like put your feet on the floor and get going like it it starts to make me like angry and uncomfortable if I just lay in the bed once I'm totally up so uh, on the docket today we have Pete on the couch you said that you had to run to the church to organize something I do because somebody was using my office for a meeting yesterday and I didn't want to like intrude so I need to go back there today oh public service announcement when I went up to like the panhandle of Florida, the weather there was freezing. It was super, super cold. And I got a little taste of 30s and 40s. And by the time I got back. That's why you want to have the house cold now. Well, it wrecked my skin though. It was unbelievable. It was very dry. It was very windy. We were outside for the, you know, the whole time mostly that we were there. And so public service announcement, we have to take care of our skin. Mm -hmm. So it was like, as soon as I get back, I had to, I just brushed this on clay mask. I mean, it looks hilarious because it's, you know, the silver charcoal mm -hmm. clay, clay mask. And so you look a little funny when you put it on, but it's so worth it because I don't like having dry, itchy, flaky skin. Oh, okay. I didn't know that you did that for like dry skin. Yeah, it, it it just makes me feel better no matter what. Okay, so uh, you're gonna go do that. I've got a couple of vlogs to edit. Uh, I gotta get back to working on our taxes and like organizing receipts and all that kind of stuff. Not the most wonderful time of the year. No, that's never really fun. And then, but lacrosse starts next week, so it's gonna get. Busy. A little hectic. I have a feeling we're really short on officials. He tried sending me to Miami uh, like three times next week. That was a long drive. And I was just like, I, I can't do the Miami trip, you it's know, really long. three times in a week. I have other work obligations. And also, those schools are 60 miles away. My car gets 11 miles to a gallon. So you're talking about by the time you add in tolls, it's over $40 for me to go do that okay. game. And you got to leave two hours before the game. And it's uh, like, I got to leave here at 2, and I'm not going to get home until like 7.30. Like, are you using up all of the money just having the I'm, fun of driving down there? I'm pretty much paying them to, to, to do the game. But I understand we're short officials, but like I have a lot of work obligations, and I can't do that. But he's like, we're really, really short on officials this year. So I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of games. And I'm also going to, one of my commitments to myself this year is I'm going to learn to say no a little bit. Because in the past, I'd so be good. like, whatever you need, I'm going to do it. And to a point, that's good. But when I start going, whatever you need and do it, and I sacrifice my own health goals, my own eating goals, my own relationship. That's not a good thing. I love what you're saying. I completely agree. And I'm going to blow your mind right now because every single day in February over on Instagram, I'm posting up kind of a daily thought for the day just to keep my head in the commitment 
to what I'm doing. And today's post is right along the lines of, I can't change a behavior that I keep excusing. And I think that that is the same way when it comes to saying yes and no. Sometimes I always have an excuse behind why I say yes to something I want to stop doing. Right. Right. So it's like I say yes, I overschedule myself, and I'm like, oh, but this is a good cause. Oh, but they're really short on officials. Oh, but somebody else needs me. And a lot of times, yeah, we talk about putting the oxygen mask on ourselves first right. so that we can help others. But it, it's living it out every day in our choices. We have to learn to put us first. So we have a little bit of a busy day today. Rachel had to go to the church to set up some things for next weekend service. And then she was going to get her nails done. And I'm editing videos and I need to go with Anthony to take a look at some new properties for our landscaping business. So we're going to cook a bottom round roast and we're going to put it in the Innova oven in sous vide mode. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't have to baby it. We're simply going to put the roast in the oven, set it for 128 degrees and it's not going to overcook because it's not going to let the temperature go over 128 degrees. So I have a beautiful bottom round roast here that I started preparing the other day. So what this is, it's a really nice bottom round roast. It's got a beautiful fat cap on the bottom. And I covered the entire thing in Redmond kosher salt. And then I put a whole bunch of this organic lemon pepper on it. So it's been dry brining for a couple days. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more seasoning to it and I've got some of this yellow mustard. I'm just gonna put a little bit on it and rub everything in and then put a little bit more seasoning on it. So I have the entire top and sides covered with mustard, so now I'm just gonna put a little bit more of this lemon pepper on here. And really the mustard is going to allow some of these seasonings to stick into the meat. And since I already did this the other day, I don't need a whole lot of it. I'm going to go ahead and get some up on the fat cap and basically do the same thing. Just put some mustard and then add some more seasoning to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a temperature probe for the Nova oven and go ahead and stick it in so the tip of the probe is in the middle. And I already have the Nova preheating. I've got it set to go to 128 degrees, got the probe temperature set to 120 degrees and the humidity at 100. I don't need to wait for this to warm up because I can just go ahead and stick it in the oven since we're going sous vide mode and it's not gonna exceed 128. Go ahead and put this in and then plug the probe in. Now we can close it up and we can just let this go. So a couple things to note when you're cooking sous vide, cause you can do this if you've got just the bags where you immerse them in water. The only difference is gonna be how you sear it in the end. but. The cool thing about sous vide is we're not gonna overcook it. So we've set it at 128 degrees for the oven. I've set the probe temperature at 128 degrees. So it's not going to exceed 128 degrees. And one of the things to note is if you're sous vide, you don't need to take it out and bring it up to room temperature because you're just cooking in humidity anyway, whether you're cooking in the Innova oven or you're cooking in a bag. So we're not worried about overcooking it or having the middle really cold because this is going to take a few hours and even if it takes an extra hour it doesn't matter because it's not going to overcook now when everything's at the temperature we're ready to eat all we need to do if we're cooking it in the oven like this is take it out turn it up to high like a 475 degrees and sear it if you were cooking like in a bag then you would you know sear it in a cast iron or something like that you could even put it under a broiler <music>
Okay, so the roast is done according to the temperature probe in the Innova. It is at 128 degrees. So we're going to double check that with our thermal works. And yep, it is at 128 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here. We're gonna turn off the oven and we're gonna turn it back on. We're gonna hit sous vide. We don't wanna sous vide it. We wanna raise this up as high as it can go. And we're basically gonna put it on sear mode. So, oh, 482 degrees. We're gonna turn on the top and the back. We're gonna turn off our steam. And then we're gonna set this for like five minutes. And once it's up to temperature, we're gonna go ahead and stick it back in for five minutes and sear it. And then we'll probably flip it over to sear the other side. Now, if you don't have the Innova Precision Oven, there's two things you can do to sear it if you sous vide your roast. One, pull out a cast iron pan, get it really hot, and just kind of sear it all the way around. Or two, stick it in your oven under the broiler on high for about five minutes and then flip it over. And again, we're just trying to get that outside sear on it because we've already cooked it all the way through. So it doesn't need to be in there a long time just to get that nice crispy outside. Okay, so the oven is up to temperature, so we're gonna go ahead now and stick the roast back in here and just go for a few minutes on each side until we get a nice crust. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and check it and see how the sear is coming. Pull this out and that looks good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip it over to get a sear over on the other side. Okay, it's been in there long enough. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Oh yeah, that looks delicious. Bring it over to the other table. Now what we're gonna do is just uh, put some foil over this, let it rest for about 10 minutes, and then we'll be good to go. Now in the meantime, we're gonna put a little bit of water in here to get some of this uh, seasoning off, deglaze it a little bit, and we can use that as a little gravy to pour over the top. So now what I'm gonna do is I have a Pyrex cup measure here. I put about a tablespoon and a half of butter in the bottom. And what we're gonna do is just take these juices, try to get mo as much as I can of all the spices, pour it in here. Give this a good mix. And now we can put that on top of the roast after we put it. I got my nails done. Let me see. And I didn't really get a good look at them because you, we were busy when you got Aren't home. they pretty? Oh, I like the design on there. I was going to get more done, but when I proposed adding designs to the nail, the, the, the sweet girl that was doing was like, oh my gosh, I'm not really good at that. So yeah. I didn't want to panic her. So I appreciate her effort on, on the two nails. But they I'm look excited. good and I like the color. <sighs> Where's dinner though? Dinner is resting right Wake now. Wake it up. It's like 7 o'clock, dude. Hey, I blame this one on you. On me. I had it going in the sous vide, and I had to slow it down because we had a coaching call, and then you were watching TV with Caleb. And My fault. Well, yeah. Well, we film all of our food, and when we're cooking it, and I can't film if you've got the TV going. So I had to slow things down. Are we close though? And I couldn't sear it until you were done watching TV. So I'm gonna blame you on this one. I, I hear this. I know you don't like the resting part, but it's really important. Otherwise you're gonna have like really dry meat. Patience is a virtue. In the meantime, we've got a piece of mail we here. We got mail. It is a card. Oh, it looks like a little Valentine. From Rachel King, said Rachel, Rachel and King. Joe. Just a note to let you know uh, you guys know how much you mean to me. So thankful for your encouragement and your joyful videos. Wow, Rachel. Very nice. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you for taking time to share that with us. I love Valentine's. So I have spent the day working on videos and, and doing some other stuff. I went and looked at some properties with Anthony. And then I went down the rabbit hole of fiddling with my drones, upgrading to new firmware. I thought I heard some buzzing. Yeah, well, I was playing with them outside, and but I'm upgrading to new firmware. 
And that's like a rabbit hole. Now you start watching videos and reprogramming things. And your meat don't get done. And the next thing you know, hours have gone by. I, I have to be so careful with my outside hobbies because I get really distracted with them and then don't want to do anything else. Well, make your wife a hot dog and let's move on. In the meantime, you want to do uh, a giveaway for three packs of the nine things of yes, Keto Chow? Yes, let's do it. So all you need to do is leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell button so you're notified. And then uh, the date will be down below of when we're going to pick Gosh, the winners. This shirt has gotten it's, huge. It's big on you because you're like completely getting some body recomposition there. I like where this is going. So, uh, and also you do have to live in the United States to win. Sorry about that. Uh, I just picked the winners for the Chow Club box yeah. as well as the winners from last week. So make sure you go check out on the community page. I'll leave a link for the community page down below. You want to go uh, slice up that beef? What do you think? Okay, here we go. Here's our bottom round. Looking nice. Now, again, we're going to look at this and the grain is kind of running this way. So we're going to slice it this way. Oh, somebody rearranged my knives. Sorry about that. Okay, we're going to go on this side. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Actually, it looks like the grain is running the other way. Oh, are you going to slice it the different way now? That's kind of weird. Okay. We're going to go this way. Is it confused? Ooh, I like that. We're going to go We're gonna go right to the middle because I know that's where you're going to want it from. Wow. That looks fantastic. There you go. That is gorgeous. There you go. Nice, medium, rare roast. I do have some juices coming out. Probably should have it, let it rest just a little bit more. But, but Rachel is ready to eat. We're going to go ahead and slice off some pieces and then plate it. Okay. Caleb actually had first slice of this, and we've already gotten a, this is really good, yelled from his room. So we're going to go ahead and try this. I feel confident that this is delicious. And oh. it is. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mm-hmm. What kind of roast is this? This is a bottom round roast. Mm. And I cooked it in the sous vide because I didn't have to baby it. Right. Just count on it being delicious. Oh. So good. That dripping sauce is really good. So that's like all the seasonings that were down below and any of the fat that uh, dripped down, which wasn't a lot. That's and the best. And then I added some water to it and butter to it mm. to bring a little bit of fat because this is a leaner piece of meat. Mm -hmm. But this is really good. And the cool part is, is it makes great leftovers. Because if you have a meat slicer, you can slice it like super thin and just have a bunch of roast beef, or you can slice it a little bit thicker. And with the Anova, like you can sous vide it in that oven to reheat it, or a it's regular really nice. sous vide. If you have a regular sous vide, put it in a bag and then just set a temperature for like 128 degrees. You're not going to overcook it, anything like that. Mm. And then it's heated up. It's kind of like, you know, if you go to some of those fast food restaurants like, uh, firehouse subs and stuff you'll yeah. see whenever they have like the shredded roast beef or something it's always in a water bath it's never just like microwaving it or something like that they keep it in a water bath at like 125 degrees or so and that makes it so it's not overcooking you don't mm -hmm. want to overcook beef then it gets all dry and gross and no nah, you don't want that this so. is good well a little bit shorter of a vlog today but we had so much going on and and I don't know what else is going on this week. I mean, you're going to be gone for two days. So I don't know how much vlogging there's going to be this week. Wednesday and Thursday. I mean, we will try our best. And at least this will be like, how do you keto in a conference yeah. kind of thing when everybody at the conference is not keto. So, Well, that's going to be the end of today's vlog. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we have roast for dinner, you'll be learning to it. Till next time. Bye. bye.